Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour, or welcome back to a discussion at least on patching General's Zero Hour. So I'm going to ma mention quite a few points in this uh, video. Let me know your thoughts and comments literally in the comments on uh, on YouTube because it's highly likely the people involved in this patch and anyone working on the patch and stuff like that will uh, probably read out each and every single one comments. So if you've got your thoughts and feedback, feel free to let us know in the, in the comments. I'm sure someone will read it. So, um, yeah, zero hour. We play, we play zero hour and every game on my channel, pretty much, or 99.99%, all the games we play are on 1.04 patch. Now, which patch is that? It's the patch, or the last official patch that came out by EA Games in, I don't know when it was, actually. Was it 2005, I think someone said, or maybe 2004? Around then. So it's been, been around for a very, very long time, and then they stopped patching it, stopped supporting the game. And as you know, like the game spy servers and all that kind of stuff now are down, and... It's now run on community servers or on Game Ranger, but the patch that we all play is the latest official EA one back from back in 2004 or 2005. Now, there's several issues with that patch. Got my notes here to help me and for you to see as well. Um, so several problems with patch 1.04. If you're familiar with the game or if you've watched several of my streams, you will have seen before there are um, many bugs inside of Zero Hour. I think probably over 100 different bugs that even I can just think of of even just by writing them down or whatever, there's a crazy amount of bugs. Some, some are really um, problematic bugs. For example, like when uh, a battle bus might still be able to shoot outside of a tunnel when actually the battle bus has gone inside of the tunnel, or whether it be the Jarman uh, snipe ability not cooling down correctly, which I've seen many times happen to me before, or many other things. There's, there's weird and wonderful things happen in Zura. Um, yeah, so, some game breaking. I suppose another one is the... Uh, is the um, clearing the tox, clearing tox bombs. So, uh, you know, like when a, a GLA drops a tox bomb in your base and you force fire the ground with a scorpion um, that's firing tox shells, you can actually clear it because the game can't handle like two lots of radiations in the same place. Like that's a bug that we actually play and use inside of the game by clearing the tox bombs, but a lot of the bugs and stuff we actually ban. So yeah, it's a bit weird. Some bugs we allow because they've kind of been a fundamental part of Zero Hour for a very long time. And some bugs are, are banned, like the game breaking ones and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's lots of problems with 1.04, mainly to do with bugs and uh, balance as well. So, of course, if you're in a tournament or whatever, and then you get presented with China Vanilla versus Tox or China versus Stealth, China versus Air or Super Weapon versus Air, any kind of one of these, you, you feel really bad straight away because pretty much doesn't matter what you're going to do if you're against an elite level player. And you're going to have to play absolutely out of your mind if you're going to win because the game is so imbalanced and Ch China and Super Weapon are considered by many to be the weakest. So some games are decided by the starting screen, which is very, very unfortunate. So yeah, that's the problems with 1.04. Um, but you're probably thinking, why, well, why is everyone still playing 1.04 then if, if, if everyone uh, if everyone recognizes these balance and bug, bug problems and stuff like that? Well... People have been playing 1.04 since literally 2004, 2005, and that's the game that we love and that we know, and we're still playing it. And despite all of these bugs, yeah, it might put some people off, but despite all these bugs, we're still able to 90 or 95% of the time actually get a decent game. Um, uh, so yeah, of course, when, when the imbalance happens, that's kind of uh, hard to fix, but we tend to do random reverse in tournaments now. So if you play China versus Tox, you will play Tox versus China and vice versa. And sometimes you're able to still break that 1-1, uh, 2-2, one, 3-3 two, two, three, three scoreline scenario, and you're still able to break it, even with a um, if you put an epic performance like with the weaker faction. So, um, yeah, that's the problems with patch 1.04. Now, we've had patches in the past, so like 1.06 is the most notable I can remember. I think there was a one was a 1.05e or something like that, like probably even before my time when I was playing Zero Hour, but 1.06 is probably the most popular one of uh, recent years, but even that was a while ago. But the problem is that because we have such a small community in Zero Hour, and if you just go on like Game Ranger and stuff, which I've got open right now, and you just go on here, everyone who just installs the game like off Steam or off Origin, they, they, they automatically get patch 1.04 and they can just boot up the game install it without watching any of my tutorials or videos they can just go in the game and they can just install it and whatever they haven't got to go online and search for a community patch that may or may not exist you see what i mean so you're able to just go on steam or go on origin rather get the ultimate collection which is what i've got you download and install the game and you've automatically got the latest patch from ea so if, you, if you've got like patch 1.06 which did change a hell of a lot inside of the game it affected like how much damage units do and the prices of units and stuff like that 
it made the build times crazy fast. So I can remember like with China Vanilla, you could make like three war factories and be producing so many Gats and Outposts that it was like even, was it more powerful than GLA, I think, because you could get so many units out, it was crazy. So yeah, whilst patch 1.06 did have its pluses, it did fix some of the some of the imbalances and stuff. I think did it even change the point defense lasers of the of the, the air general? I can't remember if it did or not. You know, like change the speed at which it reacts. I think it did, but yeah, can't remember 100 percent It affected like the the Alpha Auroras, for example. You know, they cause an absolute devastation whenever whenever it hits its target. Um but that was like reduced down to basically like to, to like a normal Aurora. It would still like make the same explosion, but it would make a lot, a lot less damage. So yeah, patch 1.06, it wasn't perfect. There was still some imbalances. And I mean, when you've got 12 factions versus 12 factions, it's always going to be hard to get it absolutely perfect. Like stealth versus China is completely different to air versus nuke and, and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's still going to be hard. But patch 1.06, yeah, uh, I mean, because everyone was still playing 1.04 and only a specific part of the community, like a niche part of the community, were playing 1.06. And then it's kind of fizzled out because not many people were playing on it. I mean, if you wanted to play with it, you could play with about two guys or maybe there'd be one tournament in a year or maybe even two years or I think the last one of that was like more than five years ago. So it kind of just fizzled out and not everyone liked it because it did change the game. Like when you're shooting flamers with RPGs and they're taking a hell of a lot longer to die and stuff like that. It's different you, like because we've played the game for 18 years now. Happy birthday to Zero, by the way, because 24th of September yesterday was uh, the 18th uh 18th birthday for zero it came out and must have been september 24th 20 no wait yeah 2003 yeah 2003 so um so yeah anyway that patch failed um so the problem with the problem with a with a patch now if you made a patch now even if everyone liked it and it was the most amazing thing ever if you made a patch now i always think of it how would it affect me right now let's say there's a new patch come out and you have to download it or it comes with gen tool or whatever and, you, and you're playing it and it's the most amazing patch whatever how would it affect me right now if i was to log in online or or play on game ranger and the, the thing is nobody really none of the pros or none of the decent players actually play on revora anymore that's something that people need to get in their heads because revora is just like such a waste of time in terms of like you you log in and if there's 200 people logged in you can't log in you could spend half an hour logging in only then to have connection issues because it doesn't like tell you who you can connect to before you actually start a game. Whereas like on Game Ranger, you can just literally go in a game and as long as they're not italic, it means you're going to connect to each other. You don't know if it's going to be laggy or whatever, but at least you know you're going to connect. And sometimes on Revora, I've spent literally one or two hours of my life trying to connect on Revora. So pretty much all the pros now and everyone plays on uh, Game Ranger. And when you've got a specific group of mates or group of players that want to play together, they sometimes then venture off and play on Radmin as well. So if I was to install this new patch, which is going to be proposed patch 1.04 plus, let's say I had that right now and I'm playing it and it's, a, and it's the most amazing thing ever. What would happen then? Would I be able to join any of these games? And the answer is no, I would not be able to join a hell of a lot of them. So for a start, only according to my calculations, only about 25% of the people here who are hosting the games playing daily on average are, uh, are on Gentool. So even if they, even if you force the patch through Gentool, and all of the gem tool people automatically got it and they were forced to play on it. Only 25% of these games would be able to be joined. Now, let's say it wasn't forced through gen tool and you had to find a website like gamereplays.org where this patch is probably going to be promoted and posted in maybe a year or whatever that I'm going to talk to you about in a second, this 1.04 plus. Let's say that you have to go on a website like that and actually download the patch. Then how many percent of these pe people or, the, or these rooms do you then think you would be able to join? The answer is very, very little, because if only 25% of people now are, are on Gentool, and that's even with me like promoting it and other YouTubers promoting it and websites promoting Gentool and stuff like that. Only to, uh, what, I, what I can work out, only 25% of people are here on Gentool. What would be the percentage of people going to manually, manually download a patch that they may not know exists entirely and, uh, and download it and install it and be playing with it, how many percent of games there would you be able to join? So sometimes here, like now, we've got about 20 games made or maybe 30 or whatever uh, that I can actually join. All of these here without the green uh, little circle next to it. With the padlock, I can't join those. But any of these games here right now, like that one, that one, that one, some of these games may be newbie or whatever. Some of them may be decent games, but whatever. I could physically join any one of those games right now. But if there was a patch out and I was running this 1.04 plus or any other patch, 
I would not be able to join him. I would be able to join him, but it probably mismatch or literally just wouldn't boot the game. So what you'd be doing is you'd be splitting the community, which is exactly what I've wrote, wrote there. You'd be splitting the community down the middle or not even down the middle. You'd be cutting off 25% of us, probably maybe 30 or 40% out of push. And the other 60%, which are all these random dudes here in, in games that are not really part of our community, probably don't watch the streams, tournaments, probably don't go on game replays, probably don't have gentle, and they're just playing normal games. You would be separating those people off. And some people in the past have said, oh yeah, well, why would you want to join their newbie games anyway? Why would you want to join... 2v2 cxn no lag or or whatever and those well you know me i, I play all type all types of games and the fact is that i could join any of those ones if i want to but if you suddenly then implement a patch suddenly then you're limiting to just your niche group or your niche community which the, the community is already small anyway look, look look how many games are open that's 20 uh it's not very much compared to other online games and stuff is it when i can basically boot up like PUBG or game of uh, CSGO or anything. I can be in a group, a group of 10 players within like an instant or even PUBG like 50 or 100 people in an instant. Zero is 18 years old and our community is small. There's only 10 or 20 games there at the moment. And all of these ones here, by the way, that are faded, they're all AFK. So there's a lot of games. There's only a few games there literally that I would join and probably some of these are laggers as well. So what you'd be doing is you'd be splitting it off into like this elitist the elitist people who are like the d decent players part part of the community follow the websites follow the streams on youtube and stuff like that and involved in our community but you'd be separating out the people who have no idea about uh youtube streams and uh the tournaments going on and game replays and gentle you'd be separating them out and most of the time you probably wouldn't play with them but let, let's say for example a lot of the videos i make on my my channel are free for alls if i boot up a free for all and if i host one now my game will fill up pretty quick but i can guarantee you probably two or three of the people out of six would not be on gentle and possibly not have a patch if there was to be a patch force through gentle in the future so that basically means that if i had that patch those people wouldn't be able to join in my game would take a hell of a lot longer to fill up so my channel here on youtube would be directly affected and some people have said, like, uh, like people behind this patch, like, if if I promote, help promote it and other YouTubes help promote it and everyone gets behind it, then we can increase the, the people getting the patch up to, like, 100% or 90% or whatever. It's completely wrong. I, I'm always joining uh joining games here. And a lot sometimes, well, a lot of the time I join games and people have never heard of me or my channel or whatever. Uh, to, to think that we can absolutely reach everyone is, um, is, a, big, uh, is a big overstatement, 100%. So what is patch 1.04 plus? Let me introduce it to you. So this is a link on gamereplays.org. I will give you this link in the description. And there's also a survey, survey one and survey two. If you would like to help take them surveys and help make this patch be the best that it can be. So for example, there's questions in there about, do you think zero hour is imbalanced? Do you think there's bugs? How bad do you think the AI is? Do you think the AI should be replaced? Do you think it should be updated and all kinds of stuff like that? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a bit late now because I've already filled your head with all my kind of thoughts. I, I've taken a while to, to make this video, by the way, because my mind has been changing on it pretty much every day or every week. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you're able to blank out everything that I've said, <laughs> don't let it don't let it affect your survey survey answers. I don't I don't think it will because a lot of these are like specifically about imbalances and bugs and the AI and stuff, and that's all, all kind of your personal opinion, which I haven't really touched on many of those bugs, maybe a two or three that I've already mentioned. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend do that and do it with a clear head, like do it, make your own mind up and don't let anything that I say influence you. But I'm still going to tell you my opinion, which is that if if we were to force a patch or the community, the, the, at least the decent players were able to get, um, or the decent active players in our community were able to get um, a patch out and we were able to, we, we started playing with the patch, my life in terms of making free for alls and any other type of video other than pro 1v1 games would be a lot harder to uh it would be a lot harder for me to make videos basically because most of these games i wouldn't be able to join even here now with like the padlocks and stuff i can't join those ones but let, let's say then that these these ones were then halved again or even 75 percent of them i wouldn't be able to join again because of a patch you'd be left with very few games left to join so yeah i think i think i might may, may have mentioned that too much now <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah on this page you've got some surveys that you can fill out if you'd like to we also got this github which we're actually going to go to in a second and here is Zezon, who's the the creator behind gentle is also um the one of the main guys helping push forward this this project or this patch in terms of organizing it and stuff um 
so yeah, he's basically saying that two years ago, this project was started. Now this project is patch 1.04 plus. Now in this patch, it was promoted as it would be the only, um, the, the only things that would be changed in here are uh, prices of units, which you can see here. Where does he say price? Uh, I don't know where it is, but yeah, basically patch 1.04 plus is basically just to um, change the, the the price and bit of build time of units. So wait, where does it say here? So it's supposed to feel like exactly like 1.04, but the only changes will be build times and price times. Um. However, after learning a little bit more about this overall project and what 1.04 plus now may look like, there are several other things up for discussion. So, for example, some just just some random examples that I've seen talked about already is the fact that well, Zezwan himself suggested that the terrorist, for example, might might have a, a self detonate button in the new patch. Now, whilst that's still up for debate and it may or may not happen, the fact that some of these things are coming up, like terrorist having a self detonate button. That's straying from what is 1.04, price and build times only, because it was presented as price and build times only in the beginning, but then suddenly now we're seeing terrorist self-detonate button, um, emperors gaining subliminal meshing because there's a bug in the game where they don't actually gain subliminal meshing, um, and, some other, and some other things. But straight away now, if you had a terrorist self-detonate button, which by the way, at the moment, if you wanted to self-detonate a terrorist, you have to grab hold of it, select it with your mouse and control fire the ground and he has to step a little bit and detonate. If you then added a self detonate button, for example, the terrorist would become a lot more powerful. Um, you'd be able to drop a terrorist straight out of a technical and, pr and press a button on it straight away, just like a de demo general, or you'd be able to click it or whatever, and it would explode straight away. So it'd make TNTs for GLA super more powerful. Like a, a TNT would probably very rarely fail. So straight away, that should ring some alarm bells that it's no longer this price and build time only thing. Now we're adding new features because someone thinks that this self detonate button was missing from terrorists in the beginning. So, I mean, that, that puts alarm bells in my head because then straight away you're adding more balance problems because you're making GLA TNTs more powerful, which is TNTs, a GLA is going to do pretty much every single game. So straight away you're messing with the dynamics and, the, and, and then you might have to, if you added that, you then have to make USA or something else more powerful to counteract that. And then straight away, you're changing the game completely. It's no longer just price and build times. I'm not even saying that this is the wrong thing to do. It's just that well, it might be the wrong thing to do. But the fact is that to me, at least, it was presented as 1.04 plus would just change price and build times, which is it's all about an expectation thing. You're expecting these to change, but then suddenly a load of other bugs are going to get changed, that new features are going to get added, there's potential talks of new models getting added, like a new ECM tank, because the tank and the China ones react differently and stuff like this. So straight away, there should be an announcement, really. It's not it's not this price and build time things anyway anymore. It's now about uh, fixing loads of bugs, and it, that doesn't matter if it means adding new features. Do you, do you see what I mean? Maybe I'm being a bit harsh on this here, but it's all about an expectation thing. Like you're expecting one thing and then suddenly new features and stuff like that are getting added. And you could come to a point where unless there's some kind of governance or something, someone could just think, oh yeah, let's say this patch is out, 1.04 plus is out and everyone's using it. And then someone just overnight goes, oh yeah, we, we need this because this this part was missing, missing from the game. This obviously needs added. And then overnight, Gen 2 will update. And then by the time you load up your game tomorrow, now suddenly units have got new abilities and there's new models and stuff like this and then it goes back to why we had past failed patches and why was patch 1.04 plus created in the first place well patch 1.04 plus was designed as you saw before to try and keep it as close to 1.04 as possible so that people didn't like it because people know and love what they what they've been playing for the last 18 years so why did patch 1.06 fail partly probably because it changed the game too much and people didn't like it so then when you start changing price and build times that's changing the game to a little degree but it's keeping all the damage and stuff the same but then if you start adding new buttons and making emperors more powerful by giving them subliminal messaging which by the way emperors are super powerful anyway it's not going to make them faster or anything like that but have you ever been on like a choky map like on uh, for example I think I played it in the World Series games that I lost against Sexy in 2019 or something like that, where I played a USA versus uh, China Tank on, I think it was Summer Arena? Yeah, Summer Arena. 
And on a choky map like that, when when the tank gets a couple of uh, overlords out, the emperors, and gets them with the ECMs, they're very, very hard to engage. Even if you've got Crusaders or if you've got Firebases or Tomahawks or Vs or whatever, and they've got a few ECMs there with the Gatling, they're very, very hard to engage. You're basically going to be making emperors into an unstoppable killing machine once they've got a few of them together. Now, not necessarily saying that's a hugely bad thing because emperors probably are partly underused a bit. Maybe they could be do doing with a bit more power bit more power but if you add subadum and Amestrian, which is one of the best upgrades in the game by the way only 500 dollars and what does it do increase the deep does it increase the dps or the fire rate uh fire rate by 25 percent and the heal rate by 25 percent something like that then you're basically making emperors close to an unstoppable killing machine and i mean it's trying to tank maybe it should be an unstoppable killing machine and maybe people should be making more emperors probably i would say maybe does the speed of them need changing i don't know but now you're getting into things like way off from this now now you're making you're giving this unit a boost you've given this unit a new ability this all strays from the original point quad scrapping issue so you've probably heard me talking about this before um so when a scrap when a quad scraps up from zero vet and no scrap at all it's just like out of the war factory get some scrap i believe it increases its damage a little bit or its fire rate or whatever and then you scrap it again and it increases it again but if you've got a quad and it's vet, vet one and then you scrap it, it actually makes the damage a little bit slower. And if you've got like um, a vet three quad, which is the strongest, by the way, and then you scrap that, you make it significantly weaker. So it, it's it's weird. It's just due to a bug in the game, something to do with FPS limit or something like that. But um, a quad is probably the most produced unit in the entire game. And they're proposing to fix it um, change the DPS of it, but then again, you're slipping away from the price and build time. So now we've only we're we're talking about adding new buttons, <laughs> adding new buttons. Uh, we're talking about boosting this unit and making it 25% stronger, and we're talking about changing the most produced unit in the entire game, which is the quad cannon, and changing its potential damage in terms of how it scraps up and stuff. You're very quickly creating a new game, and then it takes you back to 1.06, and why did that fail? So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying all of these are necessarily bad things. I think it's a, it's a big expectation versus what we are currently looking at. It's a, different, it's a difference. Maybe it should have been announced. Okay, it's not price and build time anymore. Now we're looking at all of these new things as well. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you change price and build times of things and made China more powerful and you increase these emperors, maybe overall it would be a better game. I'm just saying that we are significantly changing the game and you're potentially going to create new imbalances by having some of these things changed. Uh, clearing tox bombs for example um have you ever played like a stealth versus tox in a 1v1 and you're doing pretty okay you're holding with your buggies you've got to kind of the late stage game but tox is still pushing you back and then all of a sudden boom a tox bomb lands in the middle of your base and on top of your production and that sometimes can end the game but you might produce the toxin tractor you force fire the ground and because of the bug where it can't handle two lots of tox in one spot or two lots of radiation or whatever that it actually clears the tox bomb you're able to clear it clear the tox bomb now that helps you stay in the game and prolongs the game a little bit but imagine if you now couldn't clear that because that bug gets fixed have you ever seen how long the tox bomb lasts if it lands in the middle of your base on top of your production that will end the game right there now that might be the right thing to do or it might not be the wrong thing to do but i'm just saying that will significantly change the game now people like zezon say oh yeah well you just need to make two stingers you just need to shoot down the tox bomb not quite as simple as that in terms of shooting down tox bombs when you're under it when you're a, a, in a gla mirror against the super top player and a tox bomb lands in your base you're not always going to remember to have the stingers or your stingers at the front of the base might have been shot down and in fact I, I don't even know if it is two stingers that need to be shooting down a tox bomb i think you might need a little bit more than that before it lands in your base so at least you need quite a bit of time to be shooting at it before it lands in your base and your stingers aren't always going to be right at the front line. They're sometimes going to be maybe deeper in your base. You're not always going to be able to stop a tox bomb so easily. Trust me, I've been in there a hundred times. So, uh, yeah, they're just a few things. But, I mean, if we go over to GitHub, which is here, you can actually see... Where can we see? If we go over to this issues... You can actually go through and see and you can if you if you're familiar with the game and you've got a decent opinion and stuff like that you're able to comment and help things progress or maybe you're a programmer and can help things going on in here you can actually sign up and actually make some comments and stuff 
So you can basically read all the issues that are getting discussed and what this potential 1.04 plus patch could be. So for example, here's one. Killing an elite China Battlemaster grants a lot of XP. Controversial. So for example, the China uh yeah, China Battlemaster, if it's got double vet, you kill it, it get grants 200 XP. So you kill like six of them and you're very quickly like level three or appro approaching level three. Um sorry, you kill eight and you're level three. Um, whereas other factions might have to kill a hell of a lot of Vs or a hell of a lot of quads in order to get the same. So that, I mean, they're just discussing it. Let's see. So yeah, they are talking about... Yeah, they are talking about changing the XP. And I mean, yeah, that might help the help balance the game, but it goes back to my notepad. You, this is definitely not price and build times anymore. Now you're changing the XP structure. <laughs> now you're changing the XP structure. So for everyone that knows in a tank mirror, okay, I'm the need to kill eight of his battle masters and then all of a sudden i'm level three and he can start firing the artillery and all that kind of stuff not anymore because the guys are probably going to change it just telling you that it's going to be a vastly different game to whatever you knew before uh paladin has less hp than with a crusader that's a that's a bug in the game so yeah if you if you get composite armor your crusader actually becomes stronger than a paladin even though both of them should benefit i think the crusader actually benefits from it twice you can read the details of it here well, I mean, it's not going to change the game too much, and it would make more sense. The Paladin will obviously become more strong now. Um, I mean, it will change my FFAs, because you've seen my FFAs recently, that most epic one I recently posted. I spammed a load of Crusaders, and the reason is because with composite armor, they're stronger than the Paladins. So uh, now I'll be making Paladins only, which take longer to build and cost more. So it's changing the game. It's changing the game, definitely. Um, and I mean, you can have a read through here. MDs inside of a Humvee, not granting XP. So let's say that gets changed. Suddenly now you kill a V and you get XP for all of the missile defenders inside of it. So whoever kills the V will now be vetting up um, a lot faster and getting the XP a lot faster. So you're changing the whole dynamic of the game. And I mean, there's 100 and 140 here, 33 already closed. And I mean, some of these are just a discussion and they're waiting for people like potentially me or you or any other person who plays the game, mainly the Zero experts or the pros or whatever to comment. And some of these may just end up getting discussed and then not going ahead. But some of them also may go ahead, depending on whether the community votes for them or not. But I'm just telling you, if you suddenly implement all these 140 changes, some of them big and some of them tiny, we are going to end up with a new game. And that may be for the benefit, but my main issue with the whole thing is being able to, let's say it gets implemented now and I want to play with it now, I'd go on Game Ranger and suddenly I wouldn't be able to join 75% of the games. It would be 75% harder for me to produce a video on free for alls or whatever else I uh, make a video on. So yeah, that's my main issue. Some people will say, oh yeah, well, why don't you just switch patches? One, you can play the pros on 1.04 plus, but then you can play all the newbies and other people on 1.04. Why don't you just do that? Well, two reasons. One, I don't want to just learn. I don't want to learn two patches. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm on this patch now. So this unit's going to react differently. Oh, this bug doesn't exist in this patch or, or stuff like that. But also when I host a free for all, for example, that one, let's say we hosted that one. Some people are still going to be running the old patch and some people are going to be running the new patch only and they're going to stick to it. And some people are not going to play both patches just to join a game. So you're just going to make it significantly harder to join a game. And potentially also when uh, when old players want to come back and install the game or when new players, brand new players want to install the game, they're no longer going to be able to just install 1.04, which comes with the game. They're then going to have to go and seek a YouTube channel or a tutorial or uh, game replays or somewhere for them to be able to download this 1.04 plus as well otherwise they won't be able to play with us you're adding another hurdle in there which might not um enable them to play with us or it might stop them from playing and they might just give up in the end so yeah i know it's a lot of talking and i know kind of more of a negative twist on this uh on the positive side let's say 100 percent uptake did happen and everyone in the patch everyone on game ranger or everyone everywhere all got the patch that could be the most amazing thing ever because you could end up with a game where we can um fix all the bugs fix all the balances um yeah balance the game as you see fit like it could be a hundred percent balanced and you could keep going you could improve the models of zero and stuff which i've seen the people talking about as well about improving like the model of the firebase and making it look more hd and stuff like this as well you could make the most amazing thing so that's that's the big positive but the big negative to me is the potential of splitting the community and I, I after loads of thinking about it i don't even think it's the potential of splitting the community 
it's a guaranteed if if i think if i had this patch right now and i went to play with all of these people unless i did the biggest marketing campaign in, in the history of ever and went telling all these people how to install it and some of these people don't even speak english by the way so it's all right make me making a tutorial in english but if they speak in only arabic or something else or only russian how are we gonna uh, there's no way of convincing 100 percent of all these people no matter what anyone says into installing the patch so you're definitely going to split the community that is 100 percent given the question is just how bad would it be and i think it would be you just you're just separating the the uh is it like an elitist is that the way to say it like you, you're separating our little niche community from all the little newbie players that are just going to be playing like like i don't even know what he's playing <laughs> wtf or or cxn he's probably not on gentle is he aod you're separating all of these and you will no longer be able to play with any of these people before and just because they hosted one of these newbie games now doesn't necessarily mean if i hosted a free-for-all right now would they join my game some of them definitely would and you'd be putting them people off or they wouldn't be able to play with you anymore so my video making would become a hell of a lot harder so anyway yeah more of a negative twist on there but i don't just say things just to be negative i'm not like that i think change is usually a good thing and whenever someone presents me with a change or whatever i usually I, I, I've got my eyes open and I'm aware of all possibilities and stuff like that, but I've deliberately delayed making this video for a hell of a long time just to make sure of my mind. And I've decided that even though this patch could be the most amazing thing ever in terms of the bugs and the balances, splitting the community is an absolute definite. That It's like you, nobody can argue with it. It definitely would happen. So yeah, but don't let me... <laughs> I say all that to say this. Don't Don't let me little my words sway you i've told you what i think just from my massive experience of playing the game making videos and playing the game over many many years that's my thoughts of what i've concluded in my brain but obviously you've got your own experience let me know in the comments what you think and sorry this is a massive rant or whatever it's actually why i've taken another reason why i've taken so long to make it is because uh i prefer playing rather than just talking chip <laughs> for 30 minutes so uh yeah gg let me know what you think i'll give you all these links and stuff like that to this patch and you can see all of these things that are potentially going to get fixed do you think it's a good thing do you think it's a bad thing let everyone know your comments in the comments section the gg well played and see you later